A wise man by the name of Harvey Dent once said that you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourselves become the villain. What may be true for most superhero universes, The Boys is a different ball game altogether. The Boys verse is essentially a sensationally obscene, disturbingly bloody, and wildly exhilarating world where superheroes or soups are into all kinds of nasty stuff. From indulging in consensual and non-consensual hedonism to murder and racism, these old soups commit every social crime there is to commit. And yet, there are a social few who rise up against the others. With the first three episodes of the spin-off show Gen V, it has become evidently clear that the depravity and vile nature that Homelander and Butcher so often show has seeped into the prestigious superhero institution called Godolkin University, which in itself is plagued with a dark, dark history. Nevertheless, the collegiate edition revolves around a group of young soups who are wannabe heroes. While we have Mari Moreau and Andre Anderson doing most of the heavy lifting in the three episodes, Kate Dunlap, the mental empath, will play a much more important role in the rest of the episodes. In this video, we will explore the origins of Maddie Phillips's Kate Dunlap, her personality, powers, future, and everything in between. So without further ado, let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our expert we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. And every time you swing, yell Jumanji. A tragic past never hurt a superhero. Well, I often say that a superhero is only as great as their supervillain, but sometimes another factor adds to their greatness. That's the tragedy quotient of their past. Marie Moreau accidentally killed her parents as a young child. Jordan Lee was always looked down upon by his father for Jordan's ability to transform into a girl. Emma Mayer has a manager instead of a mom, making her a momager. So it only made sense that Miss Kate Dunlap also had a disturbing past. So Kate is basically an empath who can control other people's minds. If she touches you with her palm and asks you to do something like punching your ball sack with a bat, you do that, and you do it without a question or a second thought. This makes us draw parallels between her and the likes of Professor X and Jean Grey, but while these Omega-level mutants had to keep their psychic connection intact to control the mind, Kate's effects are long-lasting and continue to be in effect until the job she has asked you to do is done. Kate was very young when she discovered her powers for the first time. She had gone camping with her parents and younger brother when she was nine. While her parents were setting the tent up, Kate's brother was constantly kicking her at her shins. So she grabbed him by his arm and told him to go away and never come back. So he did. He never came back. Later, a massive search operation was launched, complete with volunteers and dogs, but he was never found. After this, Kate's mother never touched her, nor did her father. The event left an indelible mark on Kate, something that she could never forget. But Kate did not let that stand in her way of becoming a fine young lady and one of the most powerful soups in Godolkin University, where she also met her boyfriend, Luke, aka Golden Boy, who was played by Patrick Schwarzenegger. Life at Godyu While Kate was the girlfriend of Golden Boy, the most powerful soup at Godyu, she was a popular girl in her own right. Kate displayed immense talents as a student and a soup, and her powers at psychic manipulation made her an intimidating figure, despite the fact that she joined as beautiful as a young lady could get. However, after Golden Boy's suicide, Kate joined hands with Andre, Golden Boy's best friend, and the two of them began investigating the curious case of Golden Boy's suicide because that was something he just wouldn't do. Till the time Luke was alive, he seemed to be one of the most sorted characters, someone who knew what he wanted, someone with a plan and a definite set of goals. Yes, he would have hallucinations about his supposedly dead brother, but that was it. Devastated with Luke's death, Kate and Andre took it upon themselves to get to the bottom of things. As time passed by, the two of them became close and ended up having a moment, which is something that the show is yet to explore. I am saying this because at the beginning of the show, it seemed like Andre was romantically inclined towards Marie. God. Do it. You know you want to. No fuck. Kate Dunlap's powers and personality. Since the beginning, Kate showed signs of someone who was emotionally intelligent and knew how to deal with people. When Luke learned about his brother's alleged suicide, he blamed himself for it, for not being there for his brother. He asked Kate to use her powers and ask him to be happy, but she refused, saying that it was something he would just need to go through. She realized that some grief needs to be healed only by going through it. Taking shortcuts in these situations leads to nothing good. Yes, she can make a bartender produce 
produce the most expensive vodka at a gala dinner and push multiple people to do her bidding to save her friends, but she knows when to use her powers and when not to. Furthermore, her powers often take a drastic toll on her if she continues using them without breaks. She can get massive headaches and even seizures, which could even prove fatal. Kate is also an amazing friend. She understands where people come from and is willing to forgive for the greater good. At the end of the third episode, she makes friends with Marie, despite knowing that Marie was partly responsible for Luke's breakdown. Kate is the amalgamation of Jean Grey and Rogue. Jean Grey is classified as an Omega-level mutant who shows her immense power potential when fully merged with the Phoenix Force. In this state, she can even triumph over formidable foes, including Galactus. Jean also has extremely strong empathic abilities, which enable her to sense and manipulate the emotions of others. Her powers first presented themselves when she felt her friend Annie Richardson's slow death. Additionally, she can establish emotional connections between individuals, making them experience the pain they've inflicted on others. While she embodies a caring and nurturing persona, Jean struggles with the complexities of being an Omega-level mutant and the physical embodiment of the cosmic Phoenix Force. On the other hand, Rogue has the unique ability to absorb the life force, attributes, memories and superpowers of anyone through physical touch. Initially depicted as a reluctant supervillain, she later transitions into a superhero and becomes a prominent member of the X-Men. Now, Kate Dunlap seems to be the combination of these two ladies. Like Jean, Kate is not just an empath who can control people's minds. They both are empathetic towards people, feeling genuine care and concern for those in need. Like Jean, Kate also lost the love of her life. When compared with Rogue, Kate also has to wear gloves to protect others from her powers. Without these gloves, she could hurt people she cares about. Godolkin University's Dark History – Gen V and G-Men Gen V draws its inspiration from the G-Men, a group of soups who also attended Godolkin, a school established by John Godolkin. This institution serves as a dark and sinister take on Marvel's Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. In 1984, John Godolkin founded the G-Men and somehow acquired the compound V formula, possibly through theft or recreation. He entered into a significant agreement with Vought American, securing exclusive marketing rights for the company while granting the G-Men an extraordinary level of independence among superhero teams. Under the pretense of offering toys, sweets, and the promise of superhero training, Godolkin managed to entice six children to his mansion. Despite their later desires to leave, he held them captive, falsely convincing them of impending superhero training. Godolkin then subjected them to a deadly regimen of weekly compound V injections, a process fraught with the risk of either death or gaining superhuman ability. Abilities. Astonishingly, these children survived the procedure, becoming the original members of the G-Men team. To the outside world, the G-Men were portrayed as a group of rejected orphans, rebels, and societal outcasts with unique powers, all raised by the seemingly benevolent John Godolkin as his own children. However, the grim reality behind the walls of the G-Mansion were unknown to the public. In the comics, the G-Men were just around 9 or 10 years old. John Godolkin abused them sexually and used manipulative brainwashing tactics. Those who resisted the brainwashing were coerced through bribery, with the looming threat that any exposure of Godolkin's actions would spell the end of their seemingly glamorous lifestyle. The consequences were dire as some resorted to extreme measures, even resorting to violence against fellow G-Men who either succumbed to the abuse or refused to be brainwashed or bribed. In essence, Godolkin emerges as the boy's rendition of Professor X, but in a deeply disturbing and twisted manner. Marvelous Verdict Gen V is a remarkable spin-off that confidently forges its path without relying on cameos from the boys to validate its significance albeit there were more than a few Easter eggs. Godolkin's school campus feels organically structured, offering various schools where superheroes can select their majors and gladiatorial arenas draw audiences much like football stadiums or a Quidditch match. The competitive ranking system across classes serves as a fast track to join the Seven. This elevates the stakes and fosters our investment in characters as we root for them to secure their promotions, especially considering Gen V supposedly runs concurrently with the boys season 4. In this universe, heroes aren't defined by doing what's right or decent. Rather, they are individuals who've grappled with their identities, eventually gaining enough privilege and power to act with impunity, so long as they maintain favorable poll numbers. Challenging the system has never been more daunting than in Gen V. 
These young heroes aren't the first to attempt bringing down Vought International, but they might be the first to succeed, at least if they collaborate with the boys. However, their noble intentions to do what is right clash with the formidable order designed to break their spirits and transform them into mere puppets for display. Gen V seamlessly blends elements of contemporary teen comedies, the ruthless humor of the boys, and a remarkable shock and awe quality that fans crave. Episodes 1 to 3 are a whirlwind of superpowered storytelling, finely crafted with precision. The show offers a multifaceted portrayal of Godolkin's students delving into the complexities of their lives, which they had no choice but to accept. It adds depth to the drama by avoiding their flawed behaviors to define what heroism truly means. It evolves into a narrative about young individuals grappling with or seeking to overcome the mistakes of the adults in their lives. Each character carries the weight of their parents' shadows, intentionally or inadvertently. The show gradually portrays their journey towards breaking free from this influence, allowing them to become truer versions of themselves and form the new family they've yearned for. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.